This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, hello there, hello there. It's Jeff Cutter Diamond welcoming you to another Sports Catastrophe birthday boy. And this is the only video for today, January the 12th, because January 12th has no meaning on the sports calendar. I don't know why, but anyhow. I'm talking about a man who's now 62 years old, who was one of the best slam dunkers in NBA history. Called the Human Highlight Film, nine-time All-Star, and primarily was an Atlanta Hawk legend. He was inducted to the Hall of Fame in 2006, and in 2021, he was named to the NBA 75th anniversary team. He is Dominique Wilkins, who was French-born. People forget about that. He was, had French citizenship. So Wilkins had 11 years with the Hawks, but then had stints with the Clippers, Celtics, Panathinaikos. Fortuna, Bologna, and San Antonio and Orlando before he retired in 1999. So Wilkins was born in Paris because his father was stationed there as an airman in the U.S. Air Force. And then they would settle in Washington, North Carolina. Wilkins decided to go to the University of Georgia, which was unusual because Georgia wasn't really a basketball power. But anyway, he was the human highlight film. He helped the Bulldogs do quite well. He was named the SEC Player of the Year in 1981. And he actually left college after his junior year to be in the NBA draft. And he was picked third overall in the draft. James Worthy went first overall to L.A. because Cleveland decided to trade their number one, their first round pick to the Lakers just for players because Ted Septian was a terrible owner. And Terry Cummings for a big leave from Milwaukee? I can't remember. But anyway, so Utah had the third pick and took Wilkins. But Dominique didn't want to play in Utah. I don't know why. But at the same time, the Jazz really had cash flow problems. So because of that, Utah decided to trade Dominique to Atlanta after the draft for a couple of nobody players and $1 million in cash. So it helped Utah out with their cash flow. And Atlanta got a great point getter. So anyway, Wilkins for 10 straight years would have a, a scoring average of more than 25 a game. He would capture the scoring title in 1986 with an average of 30.3 points per game. Well, he did, mostly because MJ was hurt that year. Anyway, Wilkins was instrumental in the Hawks' prominence in the 1980s, getting four straight 51 seasons. Unfortunately, they couldn't get over the hump. If it wasn't the Bulls who locked them over, it was the, the Celtics. Dominique was a star and looked pretty good for himself. So he's 14th on the NBA scoring list as of this year. Won two slam dunk contests and nine-time All-Star. He was good at slam dunk competitions, 85 and 90. You know, the powerful one or two-handed windmill dunks and all that. His number 21 was retired by the Hawks in 2001. That was good. So anyway, he was doing pretty well for himself. Wilkins was in the final of the 1986 slam dunk contest, but somehow, some way, he lost to his five foot seven inch teammate Spud Webb. It was amazing all that. Atlanta did improve their fortunes to win 50 games, but they couldn't win the Eastern Conference semis against the Boston Celtics. And no, that was not the famous Dominic uh, Larry Bird scoring shootout. Anyway. Dominique, in 87, helped Atlanta win 50 games. Well, 51, now up to 57, but Detroit beat them in the conference semifinals. In the 1988 season, he looked good. He had 30.7 points, which was his highest scoring average ever. Sadly, though, he lost to MJ, who put up 35. And Wilkins went down to MJ in that famous slam dunk final in 1988. They called it one of the best finals in slam dunk competition until possibly 2016, Aaron Gordon versus, his name escapes me for some reason, but anyway, yeah, you know, you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, Atlanta went to the conference semis to face Boston in game seven. That was when Wilkins and Bird put up a lot of points, bucket for bucket in the fourth quarter. Wilkins put a 47, Bird had 34, but Bird had 20 of his points in the fourth quarter. It was a fourth quarter for the ages with Brent Musburger and Tommy Heinsohn. 
commentating on it. It was amusing. Wilkins was good and all that. He shocked Kenny Smith to win the slam dunk competition in 1990. But Atlanta slipped a little bit. Wilkins got his trying fast point in the 92 season. And in 92-93, he was the NBA comeback player of the year, recovering from his Achilles tendon injury to score 27 points to start the year. He actually hit 23 free throws without a miss against the Bulls, which was a record at that time. I don't know who had it. Anyway, his scoring average was 29.9 behind MJ's mark. But Wilkins beat Bob Pettit's franchise scoring record, which was good. But the Bulls swept the Hawks aside in the first round. The Hawks, after 11 and a half years, decided to trade Wilkins to the Clippers for Danny Manning. What did they see in Danny Manning? I mean, Manning was a bust. He was a college superstar, but he was a bust for the Clippers and for many teams. It was weird. It was the only time, and still the only time in NBA history, that a team in first place in their conference traded its leading scorer after the All-Star break. Why? I don't know. It just didn't make sense. And it wasn't his eighth NBA All-Star game. A lot of people said money was the reason why the Hawks made the trade because they didn't want to pay Wilkins a high contract. And besides, his contract expired at the end of the season, and they didn't think that a new long-term contract would help. The Hawks would lose the conference semis to Indiana. And worst of all for the Hawks was that when the Clippers came to Atlanta to play March 25th, 1994, he was playing against his old team in Atlanta, and he put up 36 points. It didn't help the Clippers do well, but the Hawks just basically choked. And besides, in a year that MJ wasn't around, they really lived to regret that trade. However, Wilkins was part of the uh, the U.S. team in the 94 World Championships, which was supposed to be in Yugoslavia, but because of the war problems, Canada somehow swiped the tournament from under the Americans' noses, as it seems. And it was a great tournament with games played at the Sky Dome, Maple Leaf Gardens even house and and at Cops Coliseum in Hamilton. It was a good time to be alive. I remember watching those games on CTV and all that. As a nine year old. In France that Canada would do well. Wilkins would sign with the Boston Celtics. But by 95, he was unhappy with his role on a rebuilding Celtics team. So he decided to go to Greece to join for Panathinaikos, which was a very good basketball team, one of the best European teams around. The club offered him with a four-story marble fill of his choosing, a maid, two cards, and paid to speak taxes for him. So he would have $3.5 million a season for two years. Wow. Wilkins didn't start off great. But the coach didn't really like him. He was defensive-minded, he was a disciplinarian, and didn't like Wilkins coming back to the States during the season. But Wilkins would adapt and thrive, helping Pentecostals win the Euro League Championship in 96. The Euro League Final Four was in Paris. Wilkins helped Pentecostals beat Siska in Moscow and in the final against Barcelona. He got the Final Four MVP award. And he won the Greek Cup of Pentecostals. But then he decided to head back to the NBA and San Antonio wanted him to celebrate the bench scoring. Wilkins did pretty well, 18.2 points a game. He led the team. He was the last spur to wear 21 before Tim Duncan came in. Ironically, of course, 97 was the year that the Spurs got Tim Duncan. And a lot of people said the Spurs were really tanking for Tim Duncan. Anyway, after one season, Wilkins once again went overseas to Italy. And he did okay for them. Wilkins came back to play for Orlando alongside his brother Gerald Wilkins and played 27 games for them before retiring. He was known for a slam dunk contest and all that. He was very good at all that. 
it was kind of controversial. Especially with Wilkins' last thunderous windmill dunk from the left side. It was great, but the judges gave him 45. A lot of people thought there was a lot of bias and all that. Since 2004, he's been the Hawks' vice president of basketball. And he actually is a color analyst for Hawks games, too, which isn't the bad. Dominic Wilkins actually was a judge in the 2008 NHL All-Star Game Breakaway Challenge in Atlanta, when Atlanta had a hockey team. So, he looked good at all that. Anyway, Wilkins is a is an advocate for trying to have awareness of diabetes in the urban community because his father and grandfather both died of diabetic complications. Anyway, Wilkins' stepson actually played for the University of Virginia, becoming the 2018 Defensive Player of the Year in the ACC. Regardless, in his NBA career, over 1,000 games, 1,074 to be sacked, 24.8 points a game, which is pretty good and all that. It's amazing how good he was for the Clippers after the trade from Atlanta, stupid trade Atlanta made. He didn't do much in the playoffs after leaving Atlanta, only been in five postseason games. But anyway, he got 56 games in, 25.4 points per game. Atlanta was closest to the NBA Finals in the 88, but... They couldn't get to the conference finals, which was unfortunate. So his honors, 86 scoring champion, slam dunk champ, 85 and 90, all rookie team, one all NBA first team in 86, and plenty of second teams, four of them. He was in the Hall of Fame in 2006, uh, part of EuroLeague Championship 96 for Panathinaikos, winning a Greek Cup and an Italian Cup of his teams. And he did very well. All that he still holds the free throws made in a game without a miss, twenty three of them. He he has the most consecutive free throws in a game, twenty three, but he paid no misses, and one of eight players in NBA history to get twenty five points per game for ten straight seasons. The others: Jerry West, MJ, Carl Malone, Shaq, Allen Iverson, LeBron, and Kevin Durant. He still holds the record for most points in a game seven with 47 in Boston, despite the fact they had still lost the game. Although, it was broken by Kevin Durant in 2021. Didn't know Kevin Durant did that. Why did he do that? Durant's 48 points, but they still lost. Hmm. Okay, well, that's fine. It is what it is. So, Dominique still is an icon for slam dunks and bringing the slam dunk into the lexicon. I know Dr. J did it, but We'll get to it just as well. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.